Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel Cracking Idols 9.0. So today I am going to discuss a new passage. So today I will be discussing this passage called Stonehenge. Right, and uh, as you can see on the right hand side, you have the questions 1 to 8, they are like fill in the blanks. And the question is 9 to 13, it is true, false, not given. Okay, so let's not waste any time and let's dive into the passage. So, yep. So the question says no more than two words. So you can use maximum two words here. Uh, so let's continue reading here. He talks about stage one, stage two, stage three. Okay, so I think it is about the construction of the stone hinge. So it will be easy for you because the answers will come in order. So it should be like uh, easy for you guys. So let's read it. Let's not waste any time. So for centuries, historians and archaeologists have puzzled over the many mysteries of Stonehenge, a prehistoric monument that took an estimated 1500 years to erect. Located on Salisbury Plain in southern England, it is comprised of roughly 100 massive upright stones placed in a circular layout. Now, archaeologists believe England's most iconic prehistoric ruin was built in several stages, with the earliest constructed 5,000 or more years ago. First, Neolithic Britons used primitive tools which may have been fashioned out of the deer antlers to dig a massive circular ditch and bank or a hinge. Deep pits dating back to that era and located within the circle may have once held a ring of timber post according to some scholars. Okay, now let's read the first one. This is the first stage, right? So the ditch hinge one were dug, possibly using tools made from dash. So he's talking about the tools here. I think we read something about the tools, right? The first Britons used primitive tools which may have been fashioned out of the deer antlers to dig a massive circular ditch and bank. Okay, so tools made from deer antlers. Yes, so yeah, you, as you can write two words, you can write deer antlers. Okay, next, dash may have been arranged in deep pits inside the circle. Okay, he's talking about the deep pits. I think we read it right. So deep pits dating back to that era and located within the circle may have once held a ring of timber posts according to some scholars. So what is this? Timber posts may have been arranged in deep pits inside the circle. So they have once held a ring of, ring means circular, right? Timber posts. Yes. It should be uh, timber posts. Yes. Now he's talking about stage two. Several hundred years later, it is thought Stonehenge builders hoisted an estimated eight. 80 bluestones, 43 of which remain today, into standing positions and placed them in either a horseshoe or a circular formation. These stones have been traced all the way to the Presley Hills in Wales, some 300 kilometers from the Stonehenge. How then did prehistoric builders, without sophisticated tools or engineering, all these boulders, which weigh up to four tons, over such a great distance. Okay. According to one long standing theory among archaeologists, Stonehenge builders fashioned sledges and rollers out of tree trunks to lug the bluestones from Presley Hills. They then transferred the boulders onto rafts and floated them first along the Welsh coast and then up the River Avon towards Salisbury Plain. Alternatively, they may have towed each stone with a fleet of vessels. More recent archaeological hypothesis 
have them transporting the blue stones with super sized wicker baskets on a combination of ball bearings and long grooved planks hauled by oxen okay there's a lot of information in this paragraph now let's read this blue stones from pressure hills were placed in standing position yeah that we have read theories about transportation of blue stones archaeological builders used dash to make hedge sledges and rollers okay where did we read about this sledges and rollers huh? yes stone hinge builders fashioned the sledges and rollers out of tree trunks to lug the blue stones from the pressure hills out of tree trunks so builders use tree trunks yes so it should be tree trunks then dash pull them on giant baskets where did you read about baskets it's here right so more recent hypothesis have them transporting the blue stones with super sized baskets on a combination of ball bearings and long groups hauled by oxen hauled means pulled oxen you know so yes so oxen should be the answer okay next geological mm, uh, let's read the next paragraph as well so as early as 1970s geologists have been adding their voices to the debate over stonehenge becoming into a being challenging the classic image of industrious builders pushing carting rolling or hauling giant stones from far away wales some scientists have suggested that it was glaciers not humans that carried the blue stones to salisbury plain most archaeologists have remained skeptical about this theory however wondering how the forces of nature could possibly have delivered the exact number of stones needed to complete the circle okay wow next uh, they were brought from wales by dash so according to the ge geological theory geologist what did they do challenging the classic image of builders pushing carting giant stones from uh, wales some scientists have suggested that it was glaciers not humans yes it was glaciers not humans so yes it was brought by glaciers okay all right so stage 3 is done there is nothing to answer here builders uh, a theory rose in 17th century that the builders were celtic dash now let's read let's read this 17th century okay let's read from here The third phase of construction took place around 2000 BC at this point sandstone slabs were arranged into an outer crescent or ring some were assembled into iconic three pieced structures called trilithons that stand tall in the center of stonehenge some 50 of these stones are now visible on the site which may uh, once have contained many more radiocarbon dating has revealed that work continued at stonehenge until roughly 1600 bc with the blue stones in particularly being repositioned multiple times okay right so but who were the builders of stonehenge in the 17th century archaeologist john aubrey made the claim that stonehenge was a work of druids who had important religious judicial and political roles in the celtic society celtic society okay This theory was widely popularized by the antiquarian William Stokely uh, who had unearthed primitive graves at the site even today people who identify as modern druids continue to gather at stonehenge for the summer solstice however in the mid 20th century radiocarbon dating demonstrated that stonehenge stood more than 1000 years before the celts inhabited the region okay good Mm. so what is this man now builders 
a theory rose in the 17th century that its builders were Celtic Dash. 17th century, it's here. Okay. So, John Ombre made the claim that Stonehenge was the work of Druids who had important religious, judicial, political roles in the Celtic society. So, it is the work of Druids. That should be our answer. Celtic Druids. Okay. Next. Purpose. Now, many modern historians and archaeologists now agree that several distinct tribes of people contributed to Stonehenge, each undertaking a different phase of its construction. Bones, tools and other artifacts found on the site seem to support this hypothesis. The first stage was achieved by Neolithic archaeologists who were likely to have been indigenous to the British Isles. Later, it is believed groups with advanced tools and more communal way of life left their mark on the site. Some believe that they were immigrants from the Europe continent, while others maintain that they were probably native Britons descended from the original builders. Okay. If the facts surrounding the architects and construction of Stonehenge remain shadowy at the best, the purpose, see, so purpose, is talking about purpose here. The purpose of striking monument is even more of a mystery. While there is consensus among the majority of modern scholars that Stonehenge once served the function of a burial ground, they have yet to determine that other purposes it had. So many experts, so modern scholars, majority of modern scholars, many experts agree it has been used as a Dash site, burial ground, he says. So it should be a burial site. Okay, so yes, that is a burial site. Okay, and then what is the next one? In the 1960s, it was suggested that it worked as a kind of dash. So he's talking about 1960s. It is here exactly, right? So astronomer Gerald Hawkins suggested that the cloth Cluster of megalithic stones operated as a form of calendar with different points corresponding to astrological phenomena such as solicitize, equinoxes and eclipses occurring at different times of the year. While this theory has received a considerable amount of attention over the decades, critics maintain that Stonehenge builders probably lacked the knowledge necessary to predict such events or that England's dense cloud over cloud cover would have observed their view of the skies. Now, he says in 1960s, it is suggested that it worked as a kind of what? So, it is operated as a form of calendar, kind form of calendar. That is a very direct answer, guys. Very easy and uh, direct answers these are. I think this part was very easy. Okay, first eight questions, they are directly from the passage and they are coming one by one, right? They are coming in order. So it is easy for you. So this is one more hint for you guys. All the questions, all the answers, they will come in order. So one by one, you can check. Okay, so if you see, if you got the first answer and, and you got the third answer, but you didn't get the second answer. So where, where will you search for that? You have to search with... The passages between the first and the third one, there should be your answer. Okay. So all the answers, they are coming in order. Okay. So yes, let's move to the next set of questions. That is true, false, not given. Now, if the statement agrees with the information, it is true. If it is contradicting, then it is false. If there is no information, then it is not given. Okay.
Now, first one, during the third phase of construction, sandstone slabs were placed in both the outer areas and the middle of the Stonehenge site. He is talking about the third phase. Now, where is the third phase? I think here, right? Third phase. Now, let's read this paragraph. At this point, sandstone slabs known as sarsens were arranged into an outer crescent or ring. Some were assembled into iconic three-piece structure called trilitons that stand tall in the center of the Stonehenge. Okay. Now tell me guys, do you think it is true or false or not given? So in the question he says, slabs were placed in both the outer area and the middle area. So we got one. They were arranged into an outer crescent ring and also the structures in the center of the Stonehenge. So this is the outer and this is the center. Hence it is true because it is exactly matching here. So ninth one should be true. Yes, both outer and center. Next one. There is a scientific proof that the blue stones stood in the same spot until approximately 1600 BCE. Okay. So he's talking about what? Blue stones. Okay. Let's read this. Some 50 of these stones are now visible on the site, which may have contained many more. Radiocarbon dating has revealed that work continued at Stonehenge until roughly 1600 BC, with the blue stones being particular, uh, being repositioned multiple times. Okay. Here he says, blue stones are repositioned, means their position is changed multiple times. They are not in the same spot. But here he says they are in the same spot. So what is it? True or false? Obviously, it is false, right? So this is a very direct and easy answer. You should not miss out on these, okay? Next, John Ombre's claim that about Stonehenge was supported by the 20th century findings. He says it was supported. Okay, let's read where is this guy, John Ombre? John, he is here. Archaeologist John Aubrey made the claim that Stonehenge was the work of Druids who had important uh, roles in the society. This theory was widely popularized who had uh, primitive graves at the site. Even today, people who identify as modern Druids continue to gather at Stonehenge for the summer solitaires. However, in the mid-20th century, radiocarbon dating demonstrated that Stonehenge stood more than Thousand years before the cells inhabited a region. Okay. Here he says, Stonehenge is there thousand years before these guys came to the region. These guys, the Celtic society. So, so it is completely opposing the claim, right? Here he says it is a work of druids. But here, however, means the meaning has changed now. However, because of the radiocarbon dating, they have found out that Stonehenge is standing there thousand years before the Celtic uh, Druids came to the region. So hence, uh, it is not supporting, it is opposing actually. So John Ombre's claim about Stonehenge was supported by the 20th century findings? No. The finding in 20th century, it is opposing it. It is not supporting. So hence, it is false directly. Yep. This is also Mr. False. Okay. Next, objects discovered at the Stonehenge seem to indicate that it was constructed by a number of different groups of people. Mm -hmm. So, objects at the Stonehenge. Let's read. So, many modern historians and archaeologists now agree that several distinct tribes of people contributed to Stonehenge each undertaking a different phase of its construction. Yes, I think it is supporting it, right? There are different groups of people. There are different phases of its construction. There are different tribes here. Bones, tools and other artifacts found on the site seem to support this. The first stage was achieved by the Neolithic guys, okay, who were likely to have the indigenous British Isles. Later group with advanced tools and more communal way Mark on the side, some believe that they were immigrants from Europe. Okay. 
Yes. So first sentence itself, there is the answer. Many modern historians and archaeologists now agree that several distinct tribes of people contributed to the Stonehenge. Yes. So objects discovered at Stonehenge seem to indicate that it was constructed by a number of distinct people. Yes. All these objects, bones, tools and other artifacts. Okay. So yes, guys. So this is also true. Now next one. Criticism of Gerald Hawkins' theory about Stonehenge has come mainly from other astronomers. Okay. So where is this guy? Gerald Hawkins' theory. He is here. Right. So let's read this paragraph. The astronomer Gerald Hawkins suggested that the cluster of megalithic stones operated as a form of calendar with different points corresponding to astrological phenomena like equinoxes and eclipses occurring at different times of the year. While this theory has received a considerable amount of attention over the decades, critics maintain that Stonehenge builders probably lacked the knowledge necessary to predict such events or that England's dense cloud cover would have obscured their view of the skies. So he's talking about critics. What does he say? Criticism has come mainly from other astronomers. Does he say that? Here he said only critics, but he did not say who are those critics. Right? Critics can be astronomers or other normal people or any other tribe. Okay, critics maintain that probably lacked the knowledge necessary. Here he did not say who are those critics. Here he says it came from other astronomers that we don't know because it is not mentioned in the paragraph. So what is the answer, guys? It should be not given. Okay, so that was easy. Uh, I think, yeah, so that is the end of today's video, guys. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe my videos. Please share it to your friends who are trying to crack the IELTS test. Yeah, please encourage me. I will be doing more and more videos for you guys to support you guys. So these videos will be like a practice test for you. You can uh, follow me. I will be giving away a lot of tips and tricks in all my videos. You can also check out my previous videos. I have done Cambridge 17, 16, 15, 14 as well. So please, uh, all these videos will be like a practice for you. So try to see as many videos as possible. Thank you so much. And if you want me to uh, solve any particular passage, please mention the name of the passage in the comment section. I will try to solve it for you. So, yep. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you so much and uh, keep supporting me. Let's meet again in some other video. Bye-bye.